Ever feel unsafe crossing a crosswalk? Cars cutting off your right of way? That's why Vision Zero Vancouver is excited to introduce Bricks, a new pilot program to enhance pedestrian safety. Simply grab a brick at one of our designated stands, enter the crosswalk with the brick clearly visible to surrounding vehicles, and cross the street with the full confidence that you and everyone around you is aware of your ability to protect yourself. We believe bricks will be a major disruptor to the pedestrian safety industry. Although speed bumps and other traffic calming measures do play a critical role in keeping pedestrians safe, they rely on political leadership. And frankly, who can rely on that? What you can rely on is a concrete solution. As the saying goes, sometimes the best defense is a brick. I just found out our building is supposed to be rent stabilized. Wait, what the frick? They just raised it $500. How could they do that to us? Queer. I knew we should have moved to Bushwick. Williamsburg is losing its edge. Fucking landlords. They, you know what? They've been cheating us for far too long. I'm gonna burn this place to the fucking ground. Whoa, 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 chill for that, dude. There's women, children, and gay guys in this building. But we need to find a way to stick it to the man. Maybe we can write a strongly worded letter and get some of our local politicians. Ah, involved. that would never work. Ah. We need to do something drastic and bold. <laughs> and I have just the idea. What is it? Huh? Your idea that you just had. Oh, uh, she, it just lit me. It just lit me. I was thinking maybe we could just dance the night away. You're gay. I've got it. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Yeah! Let's, just yeah! go, let's just probably just do the email and like the local representatives thing. I'll have a black coffee. A what? Just a plain old black coffee. I've never heard of that, but okay. Pronouns? Why do you need my pronouns? Not yours, your coffees. It doesn't have any. I'll just put they them. Gold or silver? What? What color do you want your coffee's septum piercing to be? I just want a normal coffee. It's 2024. We only do liberal neon haired coffee with gender non-conforming almond milk. Fine, I'll take it. How much for a croissant? 350. Alrighty. But it's a feminist croissant. No! <laughs> I have depression, anxiety disorder, and I'm confused about what gender I am. Remember that time you failed a security clearance background check because you were under investigation by the Department of Homeland Security because of all that debt you accrued from gambling? I mean, yeah, if you look at it, the U.S. is an imperialist country that values resources and money and power over people's lives. And I'm like personally not a fan of that. Boo! Boo! Go to Venezuela if you love communism so much! The United States is a fascist regime that exploits all people from sea to sea. They genocide the natives and kill those who lead them while their own citizens have no one to feed them. Yeah! This is my favorite band. If you wrote, if you wrote, if you wrote vapes in here on the outside of a wishing well and you came there at night with a flashlight and looked down in there, I'd be in there. Some reasons why autistic people are so exhausted. Connected conditions. Many conditions with chronic pain and fatigue like heads, POTS, PMDD have a high overlap with autism. Sensory overload. Sensory differences mean many autistic people are managing overstimulating sensory input at all times. It's really tiring. Masking fatigue. Some autistic folks mask their autistic traits to better fit into our neurotypical society, which requires a lot of physical and mental effort. Adjustment to change. It can be much harder and take more time for autistic people to adapt to big and small life changes. Sleep issues. Autistic people are more likely to have sleep disorders or regular sleep patterns that quite literally make us more tired. Harassment and violence. Autistic people are constantly harassed, bullied, and attacked for displaying autistic traits, which can be life or death for autistics of color. An ableist society. Living in a world that is often designed against you makes advocating for your needs and accommodations exhausting. 
Did you know there's a very specific reason why the story of Helen Keller always seems to end right when she learns how to communicate? She didn't like die immediately after she learned how to talk. She lived a very full life. She graduated uh, with a Bachelor of Arts, becoming the first blind and deaf person to do so. And she used to give political speeches. She even learned how to enjoy music by feeling the vibrations on a table later in life. But it's like, Every time you hear her story in school, it just ends like, yeah, and then she could communicate. And you're like, okay, well, what were her thoughts and opinions? Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't, don't, don't ask that question. Helen Keller was an active suffragette and a hardcore socialist. And when that came out, a bunch of the newspapers that had previously called her the most wonderful of girls when she was able to graduate college were like, Mm, I mean, how smart could she be though? She is disabled. To which, of course, Helen Keller called some absolute bullshit. The editor of the Brooklyn Eagle once said that her mistakes sprung from the manifest limitations of her development. And Helen Keller was like, yeah, he was so nice to me before that it made me blush. But now that I've come out for socialism, he reminds the public that I am deaf and blind and especially liable to error. So that's why when you hear the story of Helen Keller, it tends to end when she's a sweet little girl with no thoughts or opinions of her own, who can communicate, but you know, doesn't want to talk to you about socialism just yet. Ever notice that dogs only come in male and female? You ever notice how female hyenas have nine inch long clitorises called pseudopenises that they give birth out of? Ever notice that when a female clownfish dies, the dominant male clownfish will turn into a female? Ever noticed how parrotfishes are born female and then will turn male to balance off the ecosystem in a coral reef? Ever notice how female Komodo dragons can produce on their own if there's not a male present? Ever notice that a good chunk of reptiles' uh, gender is based off of the temperature of their nest and not God's given divine right? Ever notice that some bird species can have bilateral gynandromorphism, which basically means that they are both male and female at the same time? Ever notice that not every animal in the fucking animal kingdom has XY chromosomes, not even humans? Some humans have XXY chromosomes, XXXX chromosomes? There's a whole fucking variety because you know the world's not fucking as black and white as you think it is. Here's a list of things I do that are microfeminisms. I feel like probably a lot of you don't know that I'm an attorney during the day, so that's my nine to five. And I have a lot of little tiny things that I do that are microfeminism like acts. If you don't know what that is, long story short, it's like instead of just like standing up, burning your bra and screaming at people, it's like little acts that make men pissed off. And it's my favorite fucking thing to do. Top of the list is if somebody says I have to talk to the board or I have to talk to the chairperson of the board or I have to talk to the CEO or CFO or whoever, I will say, let me know what she says. Always she, like my default is she or her instead of he or him. Obviously, unless I know the person and I know that it's a man, I don't go out of my way to be wrong. This is an easy and obvious one, but saying MS instead of M-I-S-S or M-R-S because MS period just, it doesn't mean you're married or unmarried. It means that you just like don't know or don't care. Um, as your prefix. I know some people will say Miss and Mr. and then like their names, but I don't go that far out of my way, but I will if I'm saying first names, like if I'm saying Jane and John, I'll say Jane first instead of saying John first. If I'm on an email with a bunch of people who do not outrank each other, obviously this is like if there's not a secretary, not a assistant, anything like that, and someone has to send like a calendar invite or a Zoom invite or something like that, I will um, ask the men in the group to send it or like a specific man in the group like, hey, John, do you mind sending that? If a woman says something in an email, like they do some research and they have an opinion on something and I think it's right, but I think more needs to get added, I will say, I think Jessica's 100% right. This is correct. I just want to add something like that. Like I'll affirm and then continue. But like if a man says it, I'll just say, I want to add and I'll just go into whatever I'm going to add. And I think that part is just important because it's important to like cement, especially for women to like boost confidence and, and um, just say like, hey, like call out to everyone else. Like, hey, they're fucking right. 
They're fucking smart and they're fucking right. Anyway, I would love to know forms of microfeminism that you implement in your workplace. I'm not even sure he's on the top five of the all time greatest Lakers, bro. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. It's ridiculous. Oh, Oh, my feminist literature books. No, my feminist literature books. I'm planning to take a week off for a trip this summer. Oh, the summer is our busy season. What about in the fall? Another very busy time here. The winter? Oh, uh, we can't really have you out at peak season, you know? Maybe if you plan ahead next time. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm planning ahead and I am so proud of you. So I can have the week off? No. Don't I have unlimited paid time off? Do you? I do, yeah. I, I phrased it as a question to seem friendly, but I do have unlimited paid time off. Says who? My contract. It says that I have unlimited paid time off in my contract. Well, that contract was written in good faith. That doesn't mean that you should abuse it. This is the first time that I have asked for time off since I started working here a year ago. You took a half day three months ago. Right, yeah to go to a funeral. It came up pretty last minute is all I'm saying because it was a funeral. Okay, um, would you like HR to send you a gift basket? Yes, I would like that. And I would like a week off so that I can travel or just lie on my floor and count the popcorn kernels on my ceiling, just generally not be here. What if we added a stress ball to the gift basket? It's kind of insane that like a week ago, a report came out that pretty much definitively concluded that the last few years of inflation were due almost entirely to corporations price gouging their consumers and nothing got done about it. And why did nothing get done about it? Because it makes both of the current political parties look bad. Because for Republicans, right, it is just another data point in the decades long experiment that has proven pretty conclusively that trickle down economics just does not work. Giving massive trillion dollar tax cuts to these corporations like they did in 2017 has done nothing but encourage them to just pursue greater profit margins even at the detriment to the consumer and the working class people in this country because we still have not experienced any wage growth. In fact, we've experienced negative real wage growth over the last few years. But the Biden administration just seems dumb and ineffective because everybody knew that this was happening, yet they still let Jerome Powell go ahead with his laissez-faire Republican-esque economic policy of punishing the working class by denying them money in the hopes that they then would stop buying things from corporations and then it would hurt the corporations. Meanwhile, Democratic leadership, including Biden himself, either hesitated or outright refused to acknowledge knowledge that a lot of this inflation could have been easily dealt with using a more progressive tax structure that targeted the profits that were resulting from this blatant price gouging. Which means that the Biden administration is now marred by the fact that despite claiming to be the most pro-labor presidency in history, when the rubber met the road and they either had to choose between letting corporations continue to profit or helping the working class, they let corporations continue to profit. Don't get me wrong, Biden is definitely the most pro-labor president that the United States has seen in a hot minute. But that's also like saying you're the least suspicious person on the Epstein list. It is not the flex that you think it is. So what does McDonald's buying out all 225 restaurants from its Israeli franchise mean for us as individuals that are boycotting McDonald's as well as other brands? So for context, the Israeli branch of McDonald's gave out free meals to Israeli terrorist soldiers that are killing people in Gaza. As a result, this triggered boycotts against McDonald's worldwide, with the most successful being in Arab and Muslim countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, and Jordan. A few days ago, McDonald's said that it was going to buy out all 225 restaurants restaurants in Israel and those restaurants have been owned by an Israeli for the past 30 years. Now this is a great win for us because our boycotts worked but at the same time this doesn't mean that you should stop boycotting McDonald's because McDonald's did not entirely pull out of the Israeli market and they're not divesting from it. In fact McDonald's says that it remains committed to the Israeli market and to ensuring a positive employee and customer experience. Basically this was McDonald's damage control because they suffered a lot of losses as a result of the boycott. So McDonald's is basically 
basically trying to revive its brand image. Other targeted boycotts that we can commit to given the success of the Starbucks and McDonald's boycott include boycotting Disney and Coca-Cola. And as always, thank you so much to Indonesia and Malaysia. You guys are always the OGs. You've been literally watching my content since before October 2023 and I recognize all your efforts. I think a big reason why the boycott succeeded with McDonald's is because of you guys. People who say that I'm not disabled because I have an invisible disability are just ableist. It doesn't matter if you've been diagnosed by experts. Can you see something wrong with you? No, I didn't think so. So nothing is wrong with you. You are fine. Honest question, genuine question. Why don't leftists care about masking? Why aren't supposed radical, socially conscious people, why aren't they masking? Like, we're in a full-on pandemic raging, disabling, hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions. We care about liberation, but not for the disabled. I, I just, I don't, I genuinely do not understand the dissonance. We claim to care about communal safety, but like not about community when it comes to a virus that's spreading and acts like HIV in a lot of ways. COVID, it's a damaging virus. It's truly a damaging virus. And the denial and the passivity of leftist people in masking, I just, I. I can't, I can't grasp it, man. Like our government has lied to us about everything, but they haven't withheld things about COVID. Like COVID's the thing that we can trust them on. I'm at a loss. I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm just, I just don't get it. <laughs>